Revising Atoms and Elements, Part 2. What is an element? Okay, so if we go back to our analogy of atoms with Lego bricks, where Lego bricks are the building blocks of Lego constructions and atoms are the building blocks for everything in the entire world, we know that most things that we build out of Lego are built out of a variety of different Lego bricks. Now, all in all, there are 2,200 Lego bricks that you can choose from and you can use as many of each type or as few as each type as you need to build your construction and that you have available to you. Well, it's the same with atoms, except there's a few less to pick from. With atoms, you've got 118 different types and you can mix them up in different ways to create different materials. Water, for example, is made up of a mixture of hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. Every now and then, though, you'll get somebody who likes one particular type of Lego brick. And just by using lots and lots and lots of that type of Lego brick, they'll create their Lego construction. When this happens in the real world, when you get a material that's made out of just one type of atom over and over and over again, that is called an element. And because there are 118 different types of atom, there are 118 elements. All the elements have been listed on the periodic table of elements that you can see here and that you have a copy of in your books. The elements have not been organized alphabetically. They've been organized by size. And the size has been measured by counting the number of protons in the middle of each nucleus. Remember, what makes one type of atom different from another type is the number of protons it has. So hydrogen, which I've circled in pink, number one, is an element that is made out of atoms with only one proton in the middle. Helium, over here, is an element made out of atoms with two protons in the middle. And so it goes up. Lithium has three protons in each atom, then four protons in each atom, then five, six, seven, all the way up to 118. If you're wondering, these guys here would get squished into the table there. Okay, so what other things do you need to know about the elements on the periodic table? Well, the first thing you need to know is that most of the elements are metals. All the non-metals, which I've highlighted in yellow, are grouped together on one side of the table. The only exception to that is hydrogen. Hydrogen is in fact a metal, but it becomes a gas at extremely low temperatures. And as a gas, it actually behaves like a non-metal. So what is the difference between a metal and a non-metal? Well, what you need to know at the moment is that metals are very, very good conductors, which means that they transfer heat and electricity very, very easily through them. Non-metals are usually very poor conductors. So what else are you going to need to know for the test? Well, you need to know that all of the elements can be in any of the five states and can change between them depending on the temperature or the pressure that they're under. So they can go from a Bose-Einstein condensate to a solid, to a liquid, to a gas, right up to a plasma and back again. At room temperature, so about 20 degrees centigrade, there are only two elements that exist as a liquid. One of them is a metal and one of them is a non-metal. Do you know what either of them are? The metal that exists as a liquid is mercury. And you're going to need to know its symbol in the exam. Mercury is Hg. The other element that is a liquid at room temperature is bromine. There are quite a lot of elements that are a gas at room temperature. They are helium, neon, 
argon, krypton, xeon, radon, fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. As you can see, except for hydrogen, all of the gases at room temperature are non-metals. Everything else on the table that can exist in a state exists as a solid at room temperature. And as you can see, this is by far the majority of the table. Now, I mentioned that you're going to need to know some elements for the exam. And I'm going to go through some of the metals and other non-metal solids that you need to know. Sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium. The three magnetic elements, iron, cobalt, and nickel. You also need to know copper and zinc. You need to know gold, silver, aluminium, tin, lead. And in the non-metals, you need to know carbon and sulfur. Make sure you get these symbols written correctly. You must have capital letters and lowercase letters the right way round, not only to get the point in the exam, but to be understood when you're sharing your ideas with other people and you're writing the symbols for those elements. End of part two.